In recent decades, millions of people have drifted away from Jesus and their Catholic faith. Sadly, many may never find their way back. I'm Tom Peterson, and I believe that God has called me to use my background in media to be a catalyst in the new evangelization. Our organization produces inspiring and creative evangelization messages that have helped lead hundreds of thousands of inactive Catholics, converts, agnostics, and atheists home to Jesus and His Holy Church. Join us as we travel across North America to bring you stories of heartbreak, redemption, and transformation as the Holy Spirit leads His people home. God has an extraordinary plan for each of our lives. He wants us to spend eternity in heaven with Him and bring as many people with us as possible. This is Catholics Come Home. Now, I welcome you to my home to hear their amazing stories. Welcome to Catholics Come Home. In this episode, we'll meet a Polish man from Brockton, Massachusetts, who was baptized in a non-denominational chapel for fishermen, but grew up in a non-religious family. His mom was a flight attendant and his father a realtor and builder. His passion growing up was sports. He describes his family's so-called religion as Harley Davidson and the U.S. Marines. Upon meeting his future wife, who was raised in a Portuguese Catholic family, they began pursuing a life centered on prayer, the Catholic faith, and family. Like everyone else in this series, today's guest came home to the church by responding to a call of the Holy Spirit. I'd like you to meet Chris Quechen. Chris, welcome to our home and welcome home to the Catholic Church. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Everybody loves hearing about your stories growing up, what your family was like, what your faith background was like, where you lived. So let's start with that. So I grew up in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Oh. I was baptized at Siemens Bethel. What's Siemens Bethel? Siemens Bethel is a fisherman's chapel. Yes. Wow, that's yes. unique. So it was very non-denominational. Uh -huh. We grew up there. And what was your parents, what were their faith backgrounds? No faith um, wow. at all, no. Wow, that's amazing. And did you have brothers and sisters? I have two brothers, yes. And what did your dad and mom do for a living? My mom was a flight attendant for Delta Airlines, uh -huh. and my dad was a builder and ah, a broker. Nice. For real estate. And as you were growing up, were there any faith traditions? Did you pray at all? Did you ever go to church other than having just been baptized at a non-denominational chapel? No, um, we wow. <laughs> we came from the religion of Harley Davidson and uh, <laughs> United States Marine Corps. Harley Davidson and the U.S. Marines was your religion. In yes. other words, like manly stuff, right. secular, worldly stuff, but no God, huh? No, no. Were your parents raised with a faith background? No, I. It's hard to tell. Yeah. Like my grandmother was. Portuguese, yeah. so she has some church yeah. background. But it didn't flow down no, through the family, no. huh? So as you were growing up, when you got into trouble or you had problems, was it just you had to rely on yourself? You didn't turn to God because you didn't really have a relationship with Jesus or, or the Father, huh? No, I mean, I had friends that went to church and, you know, it was always curious about it. And Did you ever go with them, Chris? Yes, I did. And what did you think when you walked into a church? It just, at the time, wasn't for me. I didn't understand it. Nobody explained it to me. So it seemed foreign to you? Yes. Gotcha. And I tried a couple of classes with friends of mine to see if it was something to do because on Sunday, I was the only kid that was around Oh, while well, they were playing. in Sunday school right. or mass, right? Yeah. Because it's a pretty Catholic area where you grew up. Yes, it was. Okay. Yeah. And did you remember anything as a child with your friends of, you know, wow, those, those devout Catholics are different, or those Christian people are different, or did that not even hit your radar? That didn't occur to me at the yeah. time. Um, from, for me, it just some, seemed like it was something that they had to do. Yes. And um, it didn't seem like it was a, a purpose to it. Gotcha. So you're in your teen years now. Uh, was there anything that was different or rocked your world or changed anything uh, when you were in your teen years that caused you to think differently. When I was 17, a junior in high school, uh, we had just started the new year off and my mom passed away at work. What do you mean passed away? <clears throat> she, she was on a flight to Bermuda 
um, as a flight attendant. Yes. And we got a phone call that uh, my mom was sick and uh, that I had to find my dad. So I was at the school. <laughs> I, I don't understand. So your mom was working a flight? Yes. And what happened? She had a heart attack on the flight. Oh, my goodness. And she fell against the door in the, the bathroom. The bathroom. And, and they so, couldn't get to her? No, because the doors would open inward instead of outward. Oh, so they I'm couldn't so get to her in time. Yeah. Oh, how tragic. Um, <clears throat> what went through your heart and mind as a 17-year-old when you heard your mom passed so unexpectedly? Your whole life changes just like that, you know? Mm -hmm. So everything that you know at that time, so you, you come home, you know, the car's in the driveway, but the person's not Mom's there. Mom's not there. How did it affect your family? That made a big impact and a big change because all of a sudden, you know, I was planning going to college. Yeah. Uh, my mother was helping me get to that point, And then all of a sudden that came to a screeching halt. So now for what I thought was my future was no longer my future. My future now is like, okay, how do I help the family? Because now I have to step up to the plate. Yeah. So then I went to work with my dad. You gotcha. know? So yeah. So it changed a, <laughs> changed a lot and then have to help be a good role model for my younger brothers. Yes. Yeah. In the next segment, see how Chris's life will change forever. When you think that there's no hope or that there's something tragic or going on and she would turn to him and still be strong and, and have this energy and I'm like, I want that. Yeah. That's what I wanted. For victory in life, we've got to keep focused on the goal and the goal is heaven. The key to winning is choosing to do God's will and love others with all you've got. Sacrifice, discipline, and prayer are essential. We gain strength through God's Word, and we receive grace from the sacraments. And when we fumble due to sin, and it's going to happen, confession puts us back on the field. So if you haven't been going to Mass Weekly, get back in the game. We're saving your seat on the starting bench this Sunday. Welcome home. So Chris, here you are helping your father, trying to be a role model for your younger brothers. What happened next in your life and what other jobs did you do and how did you cope with that pain of losing your mother without having God as a foundation in your family? So at that time, I was also, I guess, struggling with going through puberty, the change, yeah. and then so the hormones are aging, so I turned to the gym. Yeah. I went go to the gym, work out, um, martial arts, anything that I could get into with sports wise, I got a little crazy. Crazy in what way? Um, I started working at nightclubs huh? as a bouncer. A bouncer, wow, that's a big deal. Just to Tough help. Tough guy, huh? <laughs> just to help with getting rid of my anger. Yeah. It, it, I turned to that. It was a release for you to it get rid of the rage through yes. physical activities, huh? Yes, and I looked forward to it. Did you ever beat anyone up? Yes. You did? Yes. Wow. As a bouncer or elsewhere or both? Both. Wow. So you had a lot of anger issues. Were you mad at God or did you not believe in God to be no, mad at him? No, I didn't. At the time, I yeah. wasn't really. In, it, you were just mad at life that your mom had been taken from right. you. I got gotcha. you. So was bouncer your kind of your main job for a while or did you work at the gym or what? No, I, I, um, I worked with my dad during the daytime. Okay, um, and construction. Building. Yep, we yep. build homes and remodels and all that yep. stuff. And then at night, I would work in the nightclubs. Wow. Okay. At what point did you have a pivotal change in your life? I was a gymnastics instructor. Uh -huh. um, and then I met my future wife, and she had two kids. That's Sandy. Sandy. Yeah. So she came to your gym to do youth programs for her yes. children. Yes. I got you. And then what, how did you interact? What happened there? So, I mean, I immediately fell in love with the kids and, yeah. nice. and her, and then... We just got along really good, and then she turned me more to, to God. She's been my rock ever since. So she turned you to God. So what is her faith background? What is her nationality? What was her cultural background where she had faith? Sandy is 100% Portuguese. Portuguese. She comes from the Catholic Portuguese faith. Catholics are yep. very prevalent in the Boston greater area. Yep. yep. And I'm Portuguese and Polish, so she's, oh. she said, you know, the Pope's Polish. So, so, <laughs> yeah, she's right. He was, so yeah. you're more more uh, Catholic than you think. Yeah. And I, she turned me more onto the faith, and um, 
she said, well, if we want our family to grow, you got to get into this Catholic. Good. So as you were talking about marriage and you were getting deeper in your relationship, mm -hmm. faith was very important to her. And she's kind of telling you, if you want to be part of our family, we have to have faith. Right. And how did you feel about that? I didn't know anything about it, but I'm open. Is that kind of how you felt? I was open to it. I always felt that there was something else out there. Missing? Yeah. yeah. And that, you know, God was around and you learned growing up that um, God is part of life, but nobody ever explained it to me. Yeah. Um, until Sandy. Until Sandy, yeah. So how did she share Christ with you? How did she share faith with you? that was appealing. I seen her become stronger with it. I seen her um, trust in God. When you think that there's no hope or that there's something tragic or going on and she would turn to him and still be strong and, and have this energy and I'm like, I want that. Yeah. That's what I wanted. And was it weird for you as a man to say she's not lashing out, she's not cursing, she's not angry, she's turning to God for the help right. instead of just exploding like the things guys would do if they didn't have yeah. God, right? Right. So yeah. that that was my that normal. Impressed you. That was my normal way is just to explode right. and yeah. use my muscle and my strength to yeah. to get through stuff. But then seeing how she would get through it mm. turn me on to it and then being around other people that their faith rubs off on you, and you're like, wow, what, did, what do they got that I don't have? So did you start going to Catholic Mass with her and the kids? I did, yes. Okay. And then she turned me on to RCIA. Wonderful. So you're still prepping for marriage. You're still talking about RCIA and all this. When you went to those Masses for the first time and you started interacting with good Catholics, mm -hmm. what was going through your heart at that time? That it was a great group of people to be around. Um, it wasn't the same old normal, boring um, conversations. It's just very intelligent and people that are very uplifting. And you trusted those people? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think the secular world leaves you kind of empty yes. and can't always rely on people who don't have Christ in their heart because they're going to do things the world's way. Right. But people at church are, are true friends mm -hmm. because they have Christ in their heart and they want to do things God's way, right? Yes, that's yeah. correct. So how did your faith start growing as you entered RCIA and you became more educated on the Catholic faith? So we went to a Cape Verdean church, Our Lady of Assumption mm -hmm. in New Bedford. You said a Cape Verdean church? A Cape Verdean church. Is that a cultural thing or a like a, a nationality thing? Nationality or? and Okay, and it's culture. a group of people right. who were from Cape Verde? Yeah. Okay, I, I'm not familiar with yeah, that. Yeah. Okay, it's got to be a Brockton, Boston type thing. Yeah. Okay. And was it a small church? or a It big was a small church, okay. yeah. And they were very um, open to us. Very welcoming. Huh? Yes. And my brother and I actually both took the class at the same time. Oh, the RCA classes? Yeah. Oh, great. So it worked out really well. How did your brother join you in this? Because he had a girlfriend at the time and he knew he was going to eventually get married and she was Catholic. Oh, good for came them. Came from a Catholic family. Good for these women who are influencing you young men. Yeah. And what did your dad think about all this? It's, it's just... Uh, Indifferent? Okay. Yeah, he yeah. didn't really have much to say. Okay. Just like, okay, well, that's your thing. Okay. Well, at least he didn't stop you or no. try to talk you out of it. So here's you and your brother in RCA. What things did you start learning about God as you grew in your faith? To be more trusting mm -hmm. and how to be more open and yeah. to be more of a person, basically. Yeah. Um, it, it definitely helped with my anger issues, mm -hmm. I would say, and to become more family-oriented. Was it supernatural where all of a sudden you realized you weren't as angry and you didn't know why? I would say so. Yeah, I would think so, huh? It's God's grace working in your life and in your heart that was changing you, and you didn't even realize it was happening. No. You didn't study your way into it. It just happened from God. You said yes to God, and He showed up, huh? That's correct. Did you also start recognizing things about family, that you had God as a Father in heaven, that Mary is our mother of our church and, and there for us? Did some of those things start being revealed to you as you went through RCIA? Not as much as I thought it was going to. Mm. I would say later on in life, it, it started to come to me better. As you matured in your faith? Yes. At first it was still confusing, you're, you know, it's not 100%, you know, you hope that all of a sudden you go in through the class, you come out with a, 
a diploma and say, yay, I got it, but it doesn't, uh, yeah, it doesn't and work. You understand that, everything no. about faith all of a sudden. Right. It doesn't, it doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't work that no, way. No. It's a lifelong journey. Huh? Right. And I hear in heaven that we're going to constantly learn more things about faith and the way God does things and the decisions he made. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an eternal process. So here you are prepping for marriage. You're ready to get married. Tell us about your wedding and was it in the Catholic Church? At first, it was not in the Catholic Church. We oh. got married um, underneath the tree by the Justice of the Peace. Wow. And then we got married in the church after. So what prompted you to have your marriage blessed and convalidated in the Catholic Church we, eventually? We were waiting for Sandy to have an annulment ah, to come through, okay. and, um, but we wanted to be married. Yes. So we made sure we got married first. Not, not the right way, not but the right eventually, way. No. eventually right. the right way in right. and, and the church's eyes and right. God's eyes beautifully. Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. So at this point, you're living in Massachusetts. And when did you change your careers to the career you're in now? My wife was always a court reporter, mm -hmm. and I was always basically a builder that I learned the craft from, from my your dad. father. Yeah. And then we had a lot of doors closed to us. We had mm -hmm. the crash of 2008 where all the buildings slowed down. Oh yeah, especially and, in New England. In New England. And that's when my faith really started to kick in, I would say, because we didn't know what we were going to do. We had to rely on God. Everything was slowing down. Sure. And we actually prayed a novena um, for the, on the 30th day of the novena, I had actually got into the union of the New England Carpenters Union. Wonderful, and that helped change your career and help you yes. learn more about it. You had told me a story once that you worked on like a power plant or something and kind of risked your life <laughs> building this huge dome or something? Yeah, it was a power plant for a coal plant. There's cooling stacks and you have to, they pick a handful of guys to to do this. And there's cranes and you're up cranes. like hundreds of feet high and you yeah. could die at any moment. Yes, sir. Well, you had to rely on God then, didn't you? Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> So here you are in the union learning your trade. Did you end up becoming a contractor? Yes, I did. Yes. Wonderful. And at some point your family ended up leaving the greater Boston area and mm -hmm. you moved south. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how did your faith change or grow when you made that move? Our faith only got stronger when Beautiful. we moved. When we found when we moved to the south, all of a sudden it was very welcoming. Mm. more than it was up north. And, and people talk about faith more yes. in the south. They're very open to it. Yep. So you got into more of those conversations and education and so mm -hmm. forth. Yep. So now we attend the church regularly. We practically live there. Soon you'll learn how Chris's Catholic faith is yielding much good fruit. They have a direction. Yeah. They're, they're being guided. They're following the Lord. They're listening. So they're not stressing like I was when I was a kid. I'm in a good place in my life. And I'm energized by new adventures. I've got friends to laugh with. And a good relationship. But even though I'm kind of comfortable, I sometimes wonder, is there something more? Could God and church be what you're looking for? Come and see at CatholicsComeHome.com.